Having a pet is pretty standard in today's society, but even the wildest kitty or the most hyper dog don't hold a candle to the animals we're about to talk about. Typically, we don't have wild animals as pets, but sometimes there are special circumstances that make it happen. Here are 10 people who raised their own beasts. Before we put down the newspaper and fill up the food and water bowls, take a moment to subscribe to our channel, especially if you love animals. All you need to do is click on the red subscribe button and that gray bell so you'll know the instant we post a new video. Don't worry, the gray bell has nothing to do with Pavlov's dog. John Rendell and Anthony Ace Bork John Rendell and Anthony Ace Bork are two Australian men who were living in London in 1969. After their friend visited the pet department at Harrods department store and was told the store could get any animal, the men were intrigued. Upon visiting, they saw a little lion cub in a cage and felt it was wrong for this little baby to be cooped up. After proving they could care for the cub, Rendell and Bork were able to take the cub home, who they named Christian. For a year, Christian lived in the basement of a custom furniture store where the two men worked. In the span of a year, Christian grew from 25 to 185 pounds, and Rendell and Bork realized the lion had to go. After meeting two filmmakers who made a movie about a lioness getting reintroduced to the wild, they were connected to a man named George Adamson. Soon, Rendell, Bork, and Christian were on a plane to Kenya and the lion was introduced to his natural habitat in 1971. A year later, Rendell and Bork visited Christian, who immediately recognized his caregivers and the three had an emotional reunion. The trio had one more emotional reunion in 1974 and Christian was never seen again, living happily in the wild. Janice Haley Cats are some of the most popular pets in the world, and they get a bad rep for being snobby sometimes. But behind those sassy faces are kitties who just want cuddles regardless of size. In Orlando, Florida, 57-year-old Janice Haley has two adorable cats. The thing is, though, these cuddly kitties aren't your stereotypical house cats. One is a 400-pound Bengal tiger named Janda and the other is a 600-pound Bengal tiger named Sabre. Haley has the space to keep these two beasts as they live in an enclosure in her backyard, and they are fed by hand three times a day. Looking at these tigers, they are as playful as kittens and treat Haley as if she is their mommy. Haley quit her desk job in 1995 to work with exotic animals, so this isn't her first time taking care of beasts. While critics say that Haley shouldn't be keeping two wild animals as pets, she does say that the tigers have more of a shot at survival in her home than out in the wild. She often takes pictures of Janda and Saber, and some photos even include her lying side by side with the beasts. While some may worry that Haley is mere inches away from getting attacked, she completely trusts these big kitties. Love watching our videos, but looking for a more ad-free browsing experience? Take your video viewing to the next level and sign up for the Premium Network. You'll get the first peek at the newest content from not only The Richest, but Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many more. Thousands of your favorite videos in one place is a no-brainer. Click here to be the first in line for The Premium. Wang Caillou it's one thing to seek out a wild beast to take care of yourself, and it's completely different when you accidentally adopt a beast. In Yunnan, China, that's what happened to a man named Wang Caillou. He adopted two puppies from a Vietnamese man two years prior, but as the puppies grew up, Caillou realized that he didn't have dogs at all. They were bears. At first, he didn't notice the difference and proceeded to care for them and groom them daily. But then his puppies started eating his chickens, and they appeared to have insatiable appetites. After the bears grew until they each weighed 100 pounds, Caillou learned from an informational pamphlet that what he had in his possession were Asian black bears, and they were in category two of the endangered species list. After discussing the situation with his family, Caillou made the heartbreaking decision to turn them over to the government and call the authorities. After they were identified as a healthy male and a healthy female, the two bears were transferred to the Yunnan Wild Animal Rescue Center. The story does have a happy ending. The two bears are doing very well, and Caillou visits them on a regular basis. And yes, the bears continue to recognize him. Daphne Sheldrick Dame Daphne Sheldrick is quite a special person. For over 50 years, she has been raising a certain kind of beast that you could call a gentle giant. 
In Nairobi National Park, Sheldrick runs an elephant orphanage, where she raises baby elephants up until they are three years old. Why three? Sheldrick says that babies are milk dependent until they are three, and if they were abandoned before then, they have a low chance of survival in the wild. There are a variety of reasons why a baby elephant may be orphaned. Poaching is one of the biggest reasons, and they can be abandoned due to falling down wells or because of humans intervening and causing the mother to abandon her baby. Sheldrick doesn't take care of these babies for life. She only cares for them until they are old enough to live on their own in the wild. But it isn't uncommon for the baby elephants to get attached to her. She has cared for up to 16 baby elephants at a time, and they each have their own room and stockade where they can eat, play, and learn how to live on their own. Today, she continues to work even as an 83-year-old woman, ensuring her legacy lives on. Olivier Hualet Olivier Hualet is a self-proclaimed Tarzan who moved to Namibia when he was just 18 years old. Looking at him, he has the signature long hair and has the tan to prove that he's been out on the safari for quite some time. Since first moving to Namibia, he has lived alongside wild beasts, especially cheetahs. In fact, Poilet is so in tune with these fearsome cats that he is known as the Cheetah Whisperer, and he is convinced he can teach animals how to live in the wild. Much like Sheldrick, Poilet connects with baby cheetahs who have been orphaned by poachers and sent to animal enclosures. Upon the cheetah's release, Poilet tries to follow them to make sure they remain safe. Of course, before the release happens, he is heavily involved in their upbringing. While he has no formal training, nor has he earned any degree or certifications, he considers himself an expert thanks to experience. The first set of cheetahs Poilet worked with had to be recaptured because they didn't adjust well to the wild. They didn't know how to hunt or defend themselves and started attacking local sheep. He recognizes the need to train these beasts on how to live in the wild so that the future recapture won't be necessary. Now that we're halfway through this video, it's time for a quiz. Which fictional movie beast may have actually lived over 100,000 years ago? Stay tuned to the end of the video for your answer. Svetlana and Yuri Pantalinko. Can you imagine raising a bear? They are normally seen as ferocious beasts out in the wild, but if raised properly, it seems that a bear can be just like his stuffed persona, the teddy bear. But what happens when they become full grown and the living space gets cramped? 23 years ago, a Russian couple named Svetlana and Yuri Pantalinko adopted an orphaned bear and named him Stefan. The bear was found by hunters when he was three months old and he was in really bad health. But the Pantalinkos wanted to give Stefan another chance at life. Today, Stefan lives with the couple and earns his keep by watering the plants and cuddling with his human parents. He is a very sociable bear who drinks tea watches TV on the couch, and eats about 55 pounds of fish, veggies, and eggs per day. With being domesticated, it can be easy to assume that Stefan isn't getting enough activity, but he loves outdoor sports and plays with balls every day. While it can be a bit questionable in regards to the couple's safety, the Pantalinkos say that they have never been attacked or even bitten by Stefan and feel completely safe with him. Rachel Hogan Poaching has become such a problem that there are more orphaned baby primates than ever. Gorillas are being poached for meat and even sold as exotic pets. This has been an issue that Rachel Hogan is very passionate about. In 2001, she first arrived in Cameroon to volunteer for Ape Action Africa for three months. She was so moved by what the organization was doing that she ended up staying permanently and then became the director in 2010. Hogan then found herself becoming a mom to a baby gorilla after its mother and relatives were taken by poachers and turned into bushmeat. Hogan first met the baby gorilla when he arrived at her animal sanctuary and became his mother. She took care of him, fed him, and helped him learn how to eat. The baby literally latched onto Hogan like a baby gorilla would cling to its mother. Hogan named the baby Nikon Daniel, and he has grown to be a silverback dominant male who heads a troop of 10 gorillas. Needless to say, he is now doing very well today, thanks to Hogan raising him. But Hogan also wishes that Nikon Daniel didn't have to go to her in the first place, since tragedy brought them together. Antoine Yates When you live in New York City, especially Harlem, it can seem near impossible to take care of a large beast unnoticed. 
but that's exactly what Anton Yates did. He managed to keep a 400-pound Bengal tiger named Ming in his Harlem housing complex for four years. Yates bought Ming when the tiger was just eight weeks old from an animal sanctuary in Minnesota. After moving to a five-bedroom apartment in Harlem, Ming was kept in a bedroom, and his neighbors knew that the tiger existed after Yates was coming home with a ton of raw chicken. Yates was confident that he knew Ming well enough to know what he needed. But after playing a fake fighting game called Buddy Buddy, in which a kitten intervened, Yates got in between the tiger and the kitten and got his arm and leg bitten. After receiving medical attention, Yates failed to convince doctors that the injury was from a dog bite. From then on, Ming's time as a house cat had ended, and he was moved to an animal sanctuary. Yates was arrested along with his mother who babysat children in the apartment. Needless to say, she was charged with endangerment of a child. Today, Yates lives in Las Vegas and has over 22 big cats and other exotic animals. Anel Snyman Anel Snyman takes the term crazy cat lady to a whole new level. Snyman has seven adult lions, meerkats, caracals, servals, and a leopard. One of her babies is a three-month-old white lioness named Vati, who weighs 130 pounds and runs around Snyman's house like a common house cat. While Snyman may get criticized for her collection of beasts, she insists that her efforts all go back to conservation and helping out local wildlife. When asked whether or not any of her fur babies would turn on her, she was confident and said that it wouldn't happen. Each day, Snyman and her boyfriend, Sean Weber, take care of all of the animals on the farm and continue to take in baby lions and other big cats. Snyman and Weber live in South Africa, making it so having access to these beasts is fairly easy since their farm is in a very rural area. These days, South Africa is dealing with the fact that there are eight times more lions in captivity than in the wild. Snyman also opens her home up to the public for overnight stays and educating the public about wildlife. So if you want a slumber party with a lion, Snyman is your person to call. Kevin Richardson Remember the biblical story of Daniel and how he was sentenced to the lion's den? During what should have been the end of his life, the mouths of the lions were held shut by angels, and Daniel was okay the next morning. Perhaps Daniel had a special connection to lions that no one else possessed? If you're skeptical, then let us introduce to you Kevin Richardson, who is also known as the Lion Whisperer. He definitely earns that name. He can hug a lion one moment, have it lean on him, and even have a lioness snooze on his leg. He has been face to face with a cheetah and still has all of his body parts. Richardson is a world-renowned animal behaviorist who has raised lions like they were his children. Instead of following the rules of the animal kingdom, Richardson relied on his instinct. He slept, fed, and lived alongside lions as well as cheetahs and leopards. But if you were to ask him what his favorite big cat was, he will still tell you it's the lion. Throughout the years, he has been punctured, scratched, and bitten, but never in a malicious way. He continues to work with animal conservationists in South Africa and has his own wildlife sanctuary, where he continues to raise the beasts of Africa. So, which fictional movie beast may have lived over 100,000 years ago? That could be King Kong. Paleontologists believed that Gigantopithecus blackie was a 10-foot-tall primate, making it the closest possibility that King Kong may have been real, or at least a medium-sized version of him was. Thanks for joining us. If you get inspired to raise a beast of your own, just be sure to take some precautions so you stay safe. Before you head out into the wild, check out some of our other videos and make sure you're subscribed to our channel. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.